All right, everyone. The other day, Donald Trump came out and he was doing a tweet storm, which is, you know, they've sort of coined that term to, <laughs> to uh, label it when he makes more than two tweets in a morning. Uh, and he it, he was uh, retweeting several other people, and now all of a sudden, like, Business Insider had a meltdown almost immediately. He retweeted Paul Joseph Watson and Lauren Southern. So they came out and said, well, he's retweeting, we're tweeting conspiracy theorist Paul Joseph Watson and vile racist Lauren Southern, which... I don't think that they've ever spoken to her or interviewed her to actually get, like, the true skinny on her beliefs. But this is a common theme of what the legacy media does. They didn't waste any time. Like, Crass and Steen, when I, when I tweeted out that I was overjoyed that Trump would retweet other people who were talking about tech censorship, Brian Crass and Steen, of all people, shows up on my tweet to say, well, let me know when Facebook is a state or something like that. Like, let me know when they're actually an independent entity that doesn't platform government officials that our tax money pays for. When they stop doing that, then they can be a true private business. When they stop doing that and taking subsidies from California and stop using uh, uh, various uh, tax models that, that the neoliberals gave to them uh, because they're the ones that are sucking corporate cock right now, uh, <laughs> when, when they give up those, uh, those tax schemes that allows them to use two or three other countries to pay a zero percent income tax rate, okay, then you've contributed to society. Uh, your CEO is, is a net benefit to the United States <clears throat> beyond simply the prestige of Facebook having to exist here uh, or Instagram, both Zuckerberg assets. And then you can whine about your private right to uh, ban people for a political speech. Until then, you're not really a true private entity. I pointed this out the other day. Really, these companies aren't truly private. They're using a U.S. military-based DARPAnet-derived infrastructure in the first place. They're platforming government officials. They're providing government services, especially Twitter. You can get USGS alerts you, uh, right on your phone. You get rung. There's a quake. Take cover. Uh, you know, uh, there's, been, there's been an earthquake. A tsunami might be coming. Get to high ground now. If you ban somebody in a low-lying coastal area, they could die because of a tsunami, literally because they got banned off of Twitter. That's the surreal thing. That's the power of Silicon Valley today, and that's what we have to watch out for. But what happened is that Trump... Uh, has come out. Now, finally, uh, Don Jr. has been on the forefront of this for the better part of a year. He's He's been really the attack dog against tech censorship. I guess they decided that in the wake of the latest bans, enough was enough, and they had to start defending people, and that's a very wise move. I said, the best thing Donald Trump can do is come out hard and heavy against tech censorship, because by and large, a bunch of independent con content creators across the Internet helped to put him in office. We did help to tip the scales. The power of the Internet is, is quite wonderful. Silicon Valley understands this, or they wouldn't be doing what they're doing now. If you actually think that they're concerned about my extremism, think of the children, cyberbullying, all of these family-friendly brand names that they propagandize to people to justify their fascistic corporate censorship, then I, I hate to say it, but your, your intelligence quotient might be in the mediocre range. That's not why they're doing it. These are for-profit corporations. They didn't get where they are by being nice or by caring about people's lives. They're still just businesses, and they need to be reined in. Now, some people are saying, like, like progre some progressive, like Estevel, he's a progressive. He, he agrees in, in eliminating tech censorship, but he's like, well, how are you going to do that without government regulation? We've already, the regulations are already on the books under some of our anti-monopoly and antitrust laws that have, in some cases, been around for many, many decades. The idea that a private business has, has the unilateral authority to do basically whatever it wants is restricted. It's restricted in the sense, and this is a libertarian principle, oddly enough, in that it cannot victimize other people. Now, with equal protection under the law now enshrined in our Constitution, that's part of our country's makeup as well. It's part of the fabric of our nation. I go further. I say the concept of the First Amendment is a philosophical one. The constitutional amendment itself is strictly legal. It's the government can't abuse you uh, and prevent you from speaking freely. So then how is it okay for the government to have all sorts of business and corporate ties to Silicon Valley and then simply export that same potential abuse of your constitutional right to a private entity? It doesn't make any sense. Until they are 100% totally privatized, providing no platform for any government official or service, they shouldn't be able to do that sort of thing. And then those, serv those officials and so they'd have to use different platforms. Somebody would come along and say, okay, yeah, we, we want you to use our service, and we won't censor people for political beliefs. If Congress really pressed the issue, that could happen. But I'll tell you what the problem is. I'll tell you the, this is the total problem. The problem with reigning in, like Zuckerberg especially, is that for the last 
what, what is it now? When did Facebook get founded? I can't even remember the year. More than a decade. Virtually everyone has had a Facebook. A lot of the politicians that are in there were not politicians when they had Facebook accounts. They've probably got some shit that Zuckerberg knows about them. They don't want it to get out. They're paranoid. They're afraid of these people. Our government is being hijacked by fascists and people like Brian Krasenstein are worried about Paul Joseph Watson or Lauren Southern. Lauren Southern fired off a flare one time. Oh my God, we have to make sure she never works a fucking again. Paul Joseph Watson. Oh my God, you, you know what he is? He's a conspiracy theorist. He, he worked with Alex Jones. Who fucking cares? Yes, InfoWars is trying to take over the world in order to, uh, I don't know, in, in order to uh, make the frogs less homosexual or something. He's trying to reduce the fluoride intake of your children. Very, very strange, very horrible person. Meanwhile, Zuckerberg's like, hey, I have private info about mm, hundreds of millions of individuals. I sell it to other countries and to various corporations. <laughs> Sometimes I accidentally do so in the wrong way and then it gets spread further. But you know, uh, we've got we've to work together to combat extremism. I think it is among the most extreme positions you can possibly take up. When, when you're fomenting in your mind the idea that, that someone who is a multi-multi-billionaire, who has a corporation that's worth even more than that, many, many tens of billions of dollars, has private dirt on, you know, half the citizen population of the U.S. and some of our politicians, should, that he shouldn't be reined in at all. Not only that, he should be the arbiter of what you can say and what you can think. Like, you want essentially a few dozen individuals to control your mind. Essentially, you're pushing for oligarchy. Now, that's funny because a few years uh, ago, the left had a big thing about, well, we're devolving into a corporate oligarchy, and it's a bad thing. That's what you're handing Silicon Valley. This would be no different than if your one-horse town had one car dealership, and the car dealer said, I don't like you, you're a Republican, or you're a Democrat, or, you know, you're apolitical, and I think you should be more active in politics. So you better change your mind, or I'm not selling you a car. Yeah, you can use the roads, but you have to walk. You're not allowed to buy a car. That's basically what it amounts to, and instead, and, and again... And this is point. I think Southern and Paul Joseph Watson both pointed this out. Uh, you've got to understand that fundamentally, while there are technically private business uh, competitors to these platforms, like for YouTube, there's there's BitChute, there's Daily Motion. Uh, for for Twitter, there's Gab. There's that one that Candace Owens pushed. I can't remember the name because, as far as I know, it's you know a flash in the pan sort of thing. Uh, for Amazon, yes, there are other technical publishing on demand services, but they're not really competitors. Government services don't take, you know, you're not going to get USGS alerts on Gab. You probably should be able to, but you don't. The government of the United States has made a definitive choice on which platforms it chooses to use as well. Taxpayer funded, the staffers that are managing those accounts are funded from somewhere. Where do you think they get their money? Out of the blue? Does Zuckerberg pay them? Is Twitter going to start paying the, the employee salaries of all of the uh, people who work at USGS? Are we going to privatize all the government bureaucracies and just turn them into Facebook and Twitter services or something? I wouldn't be surprised if they push for it. Oh, yeah, don't worry, we'll handle it. Then the constitutional issue goes away. So it'll be very... So, again, uh, doesn't that sound a little bit like the boogeyman of fake libertarianism, like a la the Koch brothers that's been talked about by people, like the Krasensteins for years? Oh, my God, if you privatize these things, oh, my, corporations will abuse you. But Silicon Valley is okay. No, it's because they're going after their competitors. The legacy media, Business Insider, AOL did a big hit piece the other day. Totally defamatory, too. These people should be sued for what they're saying. They're, they're all um, dogpiling on this issue, but the people that they're encouraging the banning of are their competitors. It's no surprise uh, that the legacy media would enjoy it when some independent commentator with millions of fans gets banned off of another platform. It means more attention for them. It's as clear as day. It's as simple as that. It's all about the money. That's all it's ever been about. And for the politicians, it's about keeping their jobs because a lot of them, they probably, they, they're they like Anthony Weiner. They sent dick pics to the wrong person 10 years ago when they were just, you know, a, a lowly lawyer. And now all of a sudden they find themselves in the U.S. Senate. And they're like, well, no, 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 I vote against keeping Mark Zuckerberg accountable. He's a private business and can do what he wants. Why do you think they would make that argument? There's nothing else in it for them. I, I have a feeling that most grassroots individuals don't like the idea of corporate fascism. But it's been rebranded by these people as family friendly, and that's really the problem. They've been uh, they've been fooled. They've been brainwashed into thinking that multi billion dollar corporations care about little old them. And I pointed out, and I'll, in closing here, I pointed out one final thing. It's asinine to say, well, 
the corporation should be the corporation should be trusted to hold people accountable for like speech instead of individuals determining that for themselves and debating amongst themselves despite the fact that if a corporation abuses people it can hire a hundred lawyers to defend itself and prevent any accountability private individuals when they do wrong or when they say something unconscionable or something they can't they're unable to do so you're actually at the, at the uh, fundamental root of it power should always be held by the lowest possible unit it can be held by usually the individual Certain, certain small organizations and businesses second to that, small government groups like local as, as opposed to state or federal, and then corporations and, and federal government should be at the bottom. They should have the least power, they should be the most constrained because they can be the most abusive, because they have the most potential power to abuse with. That's about all. Peace out.